Today, we're going to talk about iterated elimination of stupid strategies. And remember, what I call a stupid strategy, the rest of the game theory world calls a dominated strategy. But first, let's talk about dominant strategies. Now, in this game, there are no dominant strategies. Let's see why. Well, A isn't dominant because if X is played, you'd rather be at C than at A. Remember, to be a dominant strategy, it has to give you the highest payoff no matter what the other person does. And clearly that's not A because if X is played, A only gives you six, whereas C would have given you 99. But B, C, and D also aren't dominant strategies because if W is played, A gives you a higher payoff than any of them. Now let's turn to player two. Well, W isn't a dominant strategy because if A is played, you'd rather be at Y than W. X isn't a dominant strategy because if A is played, you'd rather be at W than X. Y isn't a dominant strategy because if B is played, you'd rather be at X than at Y. And Z isn't a dominant strategy because if B is played, you'd rather be at Y than Z. So the, the easiest way of solving for these games is, is to identify a dominant strategy, but there isn't one. Now, while players will always play a dominant strategy, they'll never play a stupid strategy. So the next thing to do when trying to solve for these games is to look for stupid strategies. B is a stupid strategy, right? B is a strategy and it's stupid because A always gives you a higher payoff than B, right? If you think about it, W was played, you'd rather be at A than B. X, you'd rather be at A and B. Y, you'd rather be at A than B. And Z, you'd rather be at A than B. So player one never wants to play B because player one would always be happier playing A. Player one will always regret playing B, thinking I would have done better playing A. Now notice B doesn't always give you the worst payoff. If X is played, B gives you a higher payoff than D. But to be a stupid strategy, only one other strategy has to always beat it, right? For me to know that you'll never do something, all I have to determine is that one thing is always better than, than that strategy. And that's in contrast to a dominant strategy. And for a strategy to be dominant or always the best no matter what, it has to beat everything else. So stupid, only one other thing has to beat it. Dominant, it has to beat everything. And, and ties don't count. So B is a stupid strategy. Player one will never play B. But we know more than that. If it's common knowledge that the players are rational, and that means player one knows two is rational, two knows one's rational, one knows that two knows that one is rational, and so on, literally to infinity, then it's player two will know that B won't be played, one will know that two will know that B won't be played, and so on. So essentially, the players can just pretend that B doesn't exist. So we can cross out B. Oh, and look, that's what I've done here. So this is just pretending that B doesn't exist. And we have a new game. Now, in this new game, let's consider X. X initially was not a stupid strategy because if B were played, you know, X is pretty good. But the parties know that B will never be played and they can pretend it's not there. And if you pretend B isn't there, X is iteratively stupid compared to, say, Y. Because you see, if A is played, Y gives you a higher payoff than X. If C is played, Y gives a higher payoff than X. And if D is played, Y gives a higher payoff than X. So thinking about this intuitively, you know, player one looks at his payoffs and he's like, oh, I can't rule out X because X would be a great thing if B was played. Oh, shoot. B is a stupid strategy on player one's part. Well, now that I know I have no hope of ever ending up here, X is dumb. X is a stupid strategy. Player one, furthermore, will realize that player two won't play X. Now, this only occurs because, because it's common knowledge that the players are rational, right? So one isn't playing B because one, know, one is rational. Two isn't going to play X because two believes that one is rational and two is rational. So iterated means repeated. Iterated elimination of stupid strategies means we start, we eliminate a stupid strategy, then we get a new game. 
And in the, if in the new game there's another stupid strategy, we eliminate that. So let's, let's do that. Let's just eliminate X. You know, okay, we've now got another game, pretending these things don't exist. And is there another stupid strategy? Well, yeah, now C is stupid. In iteratively stupid, right? Because you can see C always gives you a lower payoff than A does, given that we've taken out two. So let's do that. Let's pretend C isn't there. Okay, now C isn't there. Are there more stupid strategies? Well, now it turns out W and Y are both stupid, right? Z gives you a higher payoff than W than Y, than y in anything that's left. So we can eliminate W and Y. Okay, and when we've eliminated W and Y, now D is stupid because the only thing left is Z, and we're left with, yay, just one strategy. And that strategy is a Nash equilibrium. Let's review why. If A, you know, does either player regret if they end up here? Well, if Z is going to be played, player one doesn't regret playing A, right? Because it's the best he can do. And if A is played, player two doesn't regret playing Z because seven beats anything else. So this is indeed our Nash equilibrium. So to review, iterated elimination of stupid strategies. If a game has a stupid strategy, and it's common knowledge that everyone's rational, and by the way, the default assumption in game theory is it's common knowledge if everyone's rational. So if your professor doesn't write that on an exam, probably assume it's default assumption, probably assume he, he or she means that it's common knowledge everyone's rational, unless the professor has made a point of emphasizing something different. So there's a stupid strategy, you cross it out. You've got a new game. If in the new game there's a stupid strategy, you cross that one out and you keep going. Now, you might ask, well, what if there are two stupid strategies? Which do I cross out? I'm not going to prove this, but the order doesn't matter. You could cross out one first, then look at the new game, cross them out at the same, cross out two at the same time. With iterated elimination of stupid strategies, the order doesn't matter. So long as you just eliminate stupid strategies, you can do it any way you want, and when you're finished, you'll end up at the same place. You'll end up with the same number of strategies surviving. Now in this game, I just have one strategy for player A and one strategy for player one and one strategy for player two surviving. That certainly won't always be the case. In some games, no one has a stupid strategy, so iterated elimination of stupid strategies takes you nowhere. And other times you can eliminate a few, but not all. I just, you know, I happen to give you an example of a game where it worked really well. Something else you should be careful for, careful about. You're not allowed to have iterated elimination of weakly stupid strategies. That means where there's a tie. You'll get the wrong result. It's, it's weird. You'd think a player would never play a weakly stupid strategy, but sometimes in game theory, the only reasonable equilibrium has players playing weakly stupid strategies. So if you're going to use iterated elimination of stupid strategies, make sure you're, all, you're not eliminating things where there's a tie. Make sure the strategy is strictly um, stupid. Oh, final thing I should say, if you're asked in a game what are the stupid strategies, don't do iterated elimination. It, a strategy technically isn't defined as stupid or, or dominant if you're taking another professor's class. If you have to, if you can only get to it if you through iterated elimination. So that's, you, you can say the other strategies are iteratively stupid, but only say the ones in the original game are only, are stupid. If you're asked, you know, what strategies are stupid and what aren't. Thank you very much.